I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic, and this video summarizes the key chapters of smartphone photography, from forgotten features to the treasures of composition. In short, I will show you what to focus on to make your photos better. We will find a balloon because it's easy to explain from its basket why this photo looks boring and this one does not. And, by the way, what it has to do with famous paintings. We will explore neglected features and settings, and I am sure that 99% of smartphone owners do not know some of them, which is a pity. We will do all this for one thing – to make you believe that it's really worth to keep learning and exploring old tricks and techniques. Photography is a fascinating field and a great passion. I have been shooting for a long time in countless places from Siberia to Afghanistan. I have won some awards and published a few books, so I really count myself among traditional photographers and I love my Canon and Fujifilms. But I like my iPhone as well, because the world of smartphone photography simply fascinates me. I have been doing, by the way, traditional photography courses for over 10 years and recently for smartphones as well. So I know that they can really shoot well, but they can do it even much better, if you know how to do it. And that's what this video is about. So let us start with this balloon trip. And uh, well, you might be now surprised saying, well, this is not so exciting photo as I would like to see, and you are right. The reason why am I showing you that photo is that although it was taken in a great location, it's not exciting, whereas these photos are much nicer. And the reason is that they have the feeling of 3D, they have the feeling of dimension. And I know if you hear that for the first time in your life, it might really sound boring, but it's one of the key rules of photography is that if you want your photo to be nice, you have to be able to keep the 3D feeling in it. And if it's not there, the photo would probably be boring. It's sort of rule of your brain. Your brain just does want to be able to read the photo properly, like here. You can automatically see what's there and uh, the photos just work. Whereas here, they are rather boring. So that would be the key principle, and if you really realize how important it is, your photos would simply be immediately much better. So and what would be the key trick to keep the dimensions, the, the feeling of space in the photo? Uh, let us go with uh, the balloon, as I promised, now, so you can now see the footage. And it's actually very easy to spot the key rule here, and key rule is that you should have some lines, some structures. Uh, you see, this is boring, it's really your eye has nothing to catch on. Whereas, if suddenly something appears in the frame, you see, you can see that the line here simply creates the 3D feeling of the photo. Again, if you hear that for the first time, it might sound somehow strange or odd, but it is not. And I can really guarantee that from this day, we will be able to see lines in any really good photo or even some famous painting. So again, you can see it here, it's, it's flat, it's boring, but if you have the chance to have some line in it, it will just get really supported. So, again, do please try to look around you and realize how it is important to incorporate lines and other structures like that into your frames. And the logic behind that is quite straightforward, because the line first, it creates the 3D feeling of the shot, and secondly, it leads your look, leads your brain through it. So, uh, you see that they, this photo is basically boring. But thanks to these two structures, the road and the trees, your brain knows how to enter it and is able to read it. So, funnily enough, if you now go back through your old footage, you might found that these shots you like, like here or here, have this one thing in common. They have very clear structures, very clear lines pointing towards the tower. So your brain is able to read it and your 
eyes are able to enjoy it. And again, as I said, please do start to view the world in a very different way. If we now go back to the technical side of your smartphones, what you can see here are these quite interesting shots. And uh, you might know that this is something called Penning, when I am able to coordinate the movement of my smartphone with the movement of, well, the uh, who drives the bike or just goes with the car. By the way, <laughs> this is uh, the faces of these people were so clear that I just had to uh, anonymize them, so uh, I do not break any rules. But again, what I am trying to tell you is that first, these little tricks are just unknown to 99% of users of any smartphones in the world is the first thing. The second one is just please do try to dig inside of your smartphone and do try to find some pro functions. If you are on Android, just go to the pro section. If you are on iPhone, just you have to download some uh, app. This is from my favorite app called Pro Camera, but it's you, you need to buy it. But if you want, just you can download uh, Lightroom, for instance, which I believe is the, the simply the best uh, free application for taking shots. And do try to understand some key concept. Like here, you can see that uh, in order to make these shots, you have to ask your smartphone to use very long, or not very long, but a relatively long exposure time. And you see that it's 1 30th of second here on the left side. So it's long enough that then if you just coordinate the movement of the smartphone, you just follow the car or the bike, and it's long enough that the, the background get just blurred. So once again, go to your settings and set the camera so it uses a long exposure time and uh, it's right here. And then just follow the car, follow the bike and you'll create this amazing effect. I am showing you this is not only to, well, give you a tip and to use your smartphone, but also to tell you that there are so many hidden treasures, so many hidden settings, which in many respects can really simulate uh, the functions of proper cameras. So do explore them. You'll be really surprised. By the way, quite often you do not even need <laughs> to download any special application. And uh, th this is one of my favorite uh, tricks and effects uh, on iPhones, which is just not known to, I guess, 85% of uh, iPhone owners. You can blur any river, any waterfall in a this great uh, manner. And uh, you don't need anything. You just have to turn live uh, on. You, you see, this is this uh, yellow sign. You could just turn it on and then take the shot. And once you have the shot taken, then you have to open the photo and go to the long exposure. Just click on long exposure and in that moment, you'll just get beautifully blurred water. It's really easy <laughs> and it can dramatically help your shots. Like here, you know, it's basically boring photo in a bad light, but now it looks much better. Android cameras has the very similar things, but again, this just represents some function of smartphone as such, which are there. Then there are some special apps which you should know and you should be using. And uh, that thing is called Star trails. And again, if you are on Android, uh, well, the chances are pretty high that uh, you have some special application which can do it, which is directly in your camera or you can download some app. And if you are on iPhone, I would suggest to try this application. It's not free, but it's cheap and it just does these amazing things. You have use a tripod and just push the button like here. And then you'll see that if you point the camera towards the north, uh, you'll see how amazing little stars would be rotating around you. And again, I use this as a example of amazing application, which is very easy to overlook. And at the same time, uh, if I have some arguments with a traditional photographer who would be telling me, oh, these, you know, iPhones, Androids just can't do anything. Well, I just <laughs> showed them the quality of that shot which represents, I would guess, 15 minutes of the star trails, star movement, and the quality is just amazing. I'm just not sure how it's done, 
but it's really pity not to try it. <laughs> the only risky thing is if, if a dog passes by, you can see this is a dog, you can see its eye, and basically it ruined my precious long shot, but doesn't matter, it's the risk. Let's go to dogs <laughs> once again. Another tip, another chapter is uh, that it's very useful to use your portrait mode for non-portrait stuff. It's like here. You probably know or you should know that your smartphone have portrait mode. And typically people would be using it for portraits because the, well, the background is uh, blurred by its software. But it's a pity not to use it uh, for things like dogs and statues or pretty much anything because you can see that the effect is really important. It's maybe too, too much now, but you can uh, regulate it if you wish. But the point is that it simply gives you a great effect, which can improve your not typically boring shots by blurring the background. So again, find your portrait mode, forget that you have used it only for people and do try it for, on, well, the statues or a bottle of wine or a cup of coffee on, on your table. You'll be really surprised that it does just amazing things. Let me show you one more important thing here by this castle. And it's in fact the simply most important way of shooting. And uh, typically people would do shots like that saying, well, these, uh, there are dogs and a statue and a castle, but you, you see it's not nice. And the trick is not to zoom, just to use the wide angle lens. That means the, the very basic one and go to a short distance. You can see that I'm a couple of, well, maybe 15, 20 centimeters from the statue. And the, the trick, the reason why that way of shooting, it means with wide angle and from a short distance, is that you are actually able to have something like a person or a, well, a cup of coffee with something in background and it sounds boring but it's not it's extremely important with if you start shooting in that way you will open a completely new horizons because you are able to have several layers you, you have the dock you have another part of the statue and the castle and the garden and it's so many things so it's extremely important and as you can see i'm using the, the portrait mode here but you do not have to do it and in fact do try uh, what your camera offers without the portrait mode. And again, very classical example, a blossoming trees. And typically <laughs> people would do this and well, yeah, it's there, but it's boring, it's not nice. And look what happens if I go with a very basic lens, the most default of your camera to a short distance. Again, it's maybe 10 centimeters and you can see uh, the blossom and you have the background, you have more information, you have again many layers of the photo. And what is really important detail, you can see that the background is blurred, which is nice, but surprisingly it's not done by software, it's done by the optics. So please do try this, avoid in that case your portrait mode, go to a very short distance and you'll be surprised how amazing these shots would be. And now you can see it works same here in that case of some fashion shots when we are testing uh, mobiles. And again, I'm in, in a very short distance from the mobile. So we have two layers of the shot or here. On obviously you can use that way of capturing things around you, uh, not on mobile, but also in a scene like that. And you see that there is the model and there's uh, her surroundings. And it's quite interesting because of the same reason, because she is just in some context and it looks interesting. So again, wide angle and uh, getting close to her. But do avoid getting too close because if you go and you can see it slightly here, if I go to very short distance with that wide lens, the face of people would be distorted. You can see it here, but if you keep distance like that, then it would be nice. Which draws us to another key rule. And the rule is how do we take portraits. And you might be surprised because there are many definitions of portraits, but in traditional way of photography, portrait means that you step back and zoom. So you do not get close as we have seen before, because it did face might 
gets distorted. And the way of shooting portraits is that you move back a little bit and you zoom to the face of a model or a dog or anything. And the reason is that the face just does not get distorted. So, and if you have some high-end uh, smartphone, then it would have a dedicated portrait lens and portrait sensor, and it works nice. And again, compared to uh, that, which is nice as well, but you can see a small distortion. So that means that one of the key principles, one of the key rules is that portraits means that you are just shooting for a certain distance. You do not have that much of context. You do not see much around as compared to that one. As you might remember, this is the wide lens, wide angle. And we want this. We, we like it because we have so many information, so many layers. But this is another world, another way of shooting when we want just the detail, just a portrait of dog or a model. So, very important to realize that, in fact, we have these two extremely important ways of shooting and it's useful to know they exist. By the way, all these tricks and tips are not new at all. Well, in fact, <laughs> many of them are old as well, hundreds of years. And uh, this is another important tip. Just do go to museums, to galleries and look around and you'll be really surprised or maybe even amused because what will you see? It's like here. And you can guess, yes, the, the key uh, institution here is the line. You can see that the, the border of the street and the movements of people creates the feeling of space. It's a totally same like we've seen before. Or here, again, very traditional painting and the line of the road and creates immediately the feeling of 3D. So look around you and see these tricks which are around us for hundreds of years. And uh, really, if you go then back to a garden, you see it. There is no line, here is the line. And suddenly you feel that the existence of the line, of the road, I know it's not an exciting photo, I'm just trying to show you the physics. It gives you opportunity to see that in three dimensions. It's not there, it is there. The same here, it's not exciting photo, it's not exciting place. But again, if, if you compare that version one and you compare that shot with these, you can see how important is the little road. It leads your eyes into the shot and it gives you opportunity to create three dimensions. Again, I know if you hear this for the first time, you might say the guy is crazy, but I'm not. And once you start experimenting with this, you'll be surprised how easy it is to use, how important it is to use, and you won't be able to live without it. And do remember that then if you look at these old paintings, you'll see the same principle there. The lines are there and they create uh, the 3D feelings. So do not forget to look around you to see what works and what does not. Are you ready for one more trick which is around us for centuries? I hope you are. You can see this is very yeah, easy <laughs> a shot from uh, my tennis training and a tennis dog. And th this is something we already covered. You can see that there is the line and if I remove it, uh, well, the photo loses a bit of its appeal. It's not that 3D like the original version but we've already covered it. What we want to cover in that little part is that shade, the shadow in the, the right uh, corner. You see it? If I remove it, something happens. What happens is that the photo is not that clear. There is something wrong with that shot. You can feel it. There is the original one, no line, no shadow, and something's wrong. And again, it's just one of the key principles, key tricks, which have been around us for centuries. And even if you look at that famous painting, you see that there are dark parts in the corners. Uh, well, the, the trees, the angels' wings and, uh, and other parts as well. And it does the same like if you're well, playing with your smartphone photos and you're adding so-called vignette, you know, the dark corners to the photo. So it's nothing new. And uh, the physics is easy and straightforward. The dark parts concentrate 
your vision concentrate your eyes and they help photos much more than you would have guessed. If you just look around, you'll be really surprised how all these tricks are and how all these framings and different parts of shots might help you to achieve what you want to achieve. One more example, this is quite boring photo, but you can see that if I have this little tree on the, on the right hand side uh, and if it's not there, something's missing. Well, the reason is first that the tree gives us a certain feeling of uh, dimension. So it helps us to break the 2D and uh, creates 3D, which is one reason. And the, the another one would be that the dark color sends attention like here to the corner, to the road. So if you go back, there's no shadows, no dark parts. And suddenly, if I start adding them, it all changes. And do try this. Do go to a park and do try to shoot, uh, well, versions without anything and then add these black parts. If you've never done it before, if you hear this for the first time in your life, you might really think this is crazy. But I can promise you that from today, you'll see it everywhere. It's a principle which is around us for centuries. So do use it. The dark corners help us to create the atmosphere of the shot. And one important technical trick, tip as well, raw. Uh, you might have heard about raw, what it actually means that anytime your smartphone or camera takes a shot, uh, well, uh, there is a rather big file which gets created on the sensor. It's, it might have maybe 30 megabytes. What you get typically is, well, the JPEG or Hive, which would have two and a half megabytes. And the key principle behind RAWs and behind shooting into RAWs is same like in traditional photography. You simply are able to work with much more data. And it's easy then to, to dig out much more information if you need uh, to edit your shots. And uh, it's getting more and more incorporated into what smartphones do these days. If you have a high-end smartphone, you are very likely that they would be a nice way to shoot into RAW. And again, do try it because it opens new horizons simply because, as you can see in this illustration, it is much easier to dig details and get much more out of any photo. Well, I am torturing you with composition. So there should be a couple of minutes for a thing called golden ratio. If you ever taken any class of photography or modern art or whatever, you have probably heard about golden ratio, which is a certain rule of how to place, where to locate different things, different parts of your photos. And you can see that, for instance, here uh, is my native city of Prague and the Prague castle fits exactly to the golden ratio and it somehow makes sense. And now you probably say, oh, the guy sounds somehow confused or why doesn't he just state do this and do that? Well, I'm not <laughs> saying that because if you really want to dig into details, it'll take days probably before we decode what golden ratio actually means. So if you are beginning or if you just do not really want to spend much time, do listen to my advice. That is a graphic representation of golden ratio. This one is something which is similar to it. And it's again, very often used by photographers. It's a grid of rule of thirds. If you combine it, <laughs> it's here. You will see that what we have is basically the logic of thirds to be used in your shots. And here is the very simple explanation of rule of thirds. Roughly saying, you divide your shot into thirds, horizontally and vertically. And the rule says that if you place the most important parts of the shot into the crossings, like I did here or here, the results might be really better. And you can see that, well, the structure of these shots is just really interesting. So we have the head in one crossing, then the second doll in the other crossing. And the point here is, do understand that keeping content of your shot 
into grids like that, into these thirds, might really be a good idea. So in real life, instead of shooting the tree, which is here in the middle, we just move it to the third. You do not have to use it every time, but it's very useful to know that if you do it, the chances are that the shots would be nicer. And uh, basically, really, if you start understanding the world around you in terms of these thirds, uh, your life will be much better and much easier. It'll be really surprised how important this all is. Again, you can see it here. Again, the rule of thirds uh, and the eyes of the dogs are roughly in the third and it works. It's The shot looks interesting, it looks balanced, it looks really as it should look. So do try to remember that this is a very good idea. By the way, if you now go back <laughs> through all the shots I have shown you here during that lecture, uh, you'll be surprised that the eyes of the model would be in third. Again, you'll find the intersection of thirds here again on the face of the model or even here on the dock. So it is something which is there. It should not be overused, but the keeping the sense of grit is something which will really help your shots, I can guarantee. So, thank you for your attention and good luck. I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic.